Good day to you. It is November 11th. I uh, just wanted to um, update with another blog. I um, have a few thoughts for today. I um, had a particularly rough day with my classes, um, or at least some of my classes. Um, for my first class in the morning, um, I have a group of, a large group of students, I probably have Oh goodness, 35 to 45 students. 30, 45 might be exaggerating, but anyways, it's a big class. And one of my students, his name is Tom, and he is the um, he's the leader. He's the leader of at least a group of the guys. And um, at one point, um, I had just had it with him sleeping in my class and not participating, and so... Um, so I asked him to stand up and, and so he did, but he upped the ante by having all of his friends stand up with him every time he did it. Um, or at least they stood with him in solidarity. And, um, and so at first I was amused by this. Um, if by amused, um, uh, what is meant is completely annoyed and exasperated and infuriated, and I wanted him to stop doing that. So anyways, um, my philosophy for class is that um, if you're going to be in class, you're going to learn. And if you don't want to learn, if you don't want to work, then don't be in the class. Um, if you're not going to participate, then at least keep your mouth shut and don't distract other people and keep them from learning. And I take, I take English teaching extremely seriously, and I will reach my objectives with those students, and those students will achieve, and if you don't want to achieve, then get out of my classroom. Um, so I'm kind of intense about it, but anyway, so um, yeah, I just found his behavior to be distracting to the students, and, um, um, and I'm probably being anal about it, but, uh, but that's just what I think. And so... I thought, okay, well, all of you need to leave. Um, so I kicked all of them out of the classroom, and that was maybe five to seven students, um, all men, and um, I'll probably could have kicked my butt. And but I just have zero tolerance for that kind of um, that kind of BS. Um, I just have zero tolerance for it, and so kicked them out of the classroom and they were really upset about it. And I was totally fine with them being upset about it because they, well, I brought it on them because they brought it on themselves. And um, maybe the logic isn't quite right there the way I expressed it, but um, I value education. And um, so that was no fun. And um, I had a couple of bumps in the road during the day. Um, like I'm teaching these freshmen, these university freshmen, Chinese university freshmen, um, who are adult age, um, legally, I mean, America, America, uh, the United States speaking, they're le they're the legal age, like 18 or over, give or take, by a year or two. Um, but because of the, the way they've been raised, um, and the culture that they're used to, they are kids. <laughs> they have the mentality of children coming into school. And um, so I have a forceful personality. And I, unfortunately, um, whether it was appropriate or not, I've had to use my personality many times to um, bring students into line and bring entire classes into line and to train my classes in appropriate university behavior and that has meant kicking a lot of butt and um and i've gotten pretty intense about it many many times and confrontational about it many times um and so i i've i know i've certainly made my mistakes and um and sometimes i apologize for those mistakes and sometimes i'm just stubborn and i'm not going to but um but i want um you know, I want to achieve in my career, and I want my students to achieve also. And I value both those things, and some of that's selfish, and some of that is 
I'm here to serve you whether you like it or not. <laughs> and so, um, and so, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was a tough day. And, um, and so I just kind of checked out this evening and, um, and watched a lot of things and ended up watching a movie, um, which really, um, encouraged me because it was all about Denzel Washington kicking butt. Um, and, um, and so, uh, it was called the equalizer. Highly recommend it. Um, if you're a guy over 30, um, cause it's amazing. I mean, I recommend it if you're anyone and you'd like to see butt kicking action. I mean, just imagine taken times 10, uh, in terms of intensity and, um, bloodiness. But anyways, I digress. Um, so I watched that and then afterwards, um, I was watching some interviews of Denzel Washington and uh, the director of the film and uh, Antoine, I'm not even going to try to say the last name because I know I'm going to mess it up. But um, anyways, he mentioned uh, at one point, like giving back and mentioned um, this sort of teaching program that existed um when Denzel was growing up, he mentioned, uh, it was called, um, each one teach one. And he didn't mention the source of it, but actually I had read a book, um, in my master's degree program that was the, where this began, the person who started it. And, um, and it was actually a, um, it was actually a tribal chief in, I believe the Philippines. Um, or some, uh, Southeast Asian country. But anyways, there was a, a, a missionary there named Frank C. Uh, La, Labak, Frank C. Labak. I think I'm spelling that, saying that right. Um, and anyways, he was a missionary there, but he was also teaching English and, um, and just, um, really loved Jesus and, um, since his, his wife and like, since his family wasn't with him, he was struggled a lot with loneliness and he spent a lot of time in prayer and, um, and he ended up writing several letters to his father, which, um, were later published in a book called letters by a modern mystic. And I've read this book and it absolutely rocked my life. And um, so for those of you who are watching, some of you are Christian, some of you are not. I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. Um, and so uh, hopefully that doesn't offend you, but that's just, that's the background that I have. I grew up in the church. And so anyways, this book is very spiritual and it's very focused on um, a relate, a living relationship with God. And I, to be totally honest, I recommend everybody, I think everybody should read it. Christian, non-Christian, doesn't matter. Um, at the time, this guy is ministering to Muslims, um, which I think is really interesting. Um, and so I actually, I started reading this book tonight ba based on this reminder by Denzel, this passive reminder, oh, each one teach one. And I was like, oh, it came from this book came from this author who wrote the, these letters that turned into this book. Um, so I actually want to read a passage from this book um, because it just really blessed me. And it's a long passage, so I hope that you're willing to stick around for it. Um, I make no qualms about it. I talk a lot. And so sometimes my video, videos are going to be short. They're probably going to be long, though. So um, deal with it. Um, you're more than welcome to go away. But now I'm going to read this. Um, so um, here we go. My teacher, Datu uh, Pambaya, told me this week that a good Muslim ought to utter the sacred word for God every time he begins to do anything, to sleep or walk or work or even turn around. A good Muslim would fill his life with God. I fear there are few good Muslims. But so would a real Christ-like Christian speak to God every time he did anything. And I fear there are few good Christians. 
What right then have I or any other person to come here and change the name of these people from Muslim to Christian unless I lead them to a life fuller of God than they have now? Clearly, clearly my job here is not to go to the town plaza and make proselytes. Um, is it to live wrapped in God, trembling to his thoughts? Oh, excuse me. It is to live wrapped in God, trembling in his thoughts, burning with his passion. And my loved one, that is the best gift you can give to your own town. Um, and so that's the passage. Um, and uh, the, the book is extraordinary. Again, I highly recommend it. But um, that particular aspect of it, I really like that because I feel like we Christians tend to have uh, a better than thou attitude. And I heard um, or read a pastor minister say recently that he feels like the world, that God is protecting the world from the church. And I think there's a lot of accuracy to that. Um, so I'm going to get a little metaphysical on you, but I believe that there, are, um, that words have tremendous power to build or to destroy. And honestly, um, I think that Christians use their words a lot of times to judge cities or people um, that they think are in sin. And we have used our words um, to curse people, to basically curse people. And that's going to, maybe that some, to, to some of you, that's going to sound strange. Um, but really, words have power. And so, um, I think he, um, Frank here, Frank Labach, really has a good point. Um uh, what right then I or any other person to come here and change the name of these people from Muslim to Christian unless I lead them in a life fuller of God than they have now? That rocks my soul to the very core. That challenges me because it makes me realize I, can, I want people to accept Jesus. That's what I want. I think it's the best way. Jesus has changed my life radically, and maybe that's going to offend some of you. Um, but and I say that with honesty. But what right do I have to change anybody's name from atheist or agnostic or Buddhist or Muslim or anything like that? What right do I have to do that unless I lead people? through an example, through my life, to a life fuller of God than they, than they have now. Um, I'm not sure that's always the case, if even a majority of the percentage of the time, and it's probably, um, probably not even as good as 50% of the time. And this is unacceptable. This is ridiculously, utterly unacceptable. And so here I am faced with a wall of my own hypocrisy, maybe. But, um, I mean, I'm just as flawed as any human out there. I make tons of mistakes and I have to clean up messes constantly. And I'm superhuman, but... <laughs> I, no, not superhuman. I am super flawed. That's that's a better way to put it. Um, so, <coughs> what now? I need to work in the center of my sphere of influence, as Stephen Covey would would explain it. Um, uh, Stephen Covey wrote The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I need to work in the center of my sphere of influence, not in my sphere of concern, 
not in the things that I can't control. I need to work in the center of the things that I can control. And what are those things? Making promises to myself and keeping those promises. And seeking God in a way that gives him permission to live in and through me to such an astounding degree that lives are changed around me without me necessarily having to talk directly about God. Now, I'm a pretty direct person. I'm probably going to talk about God anyways. I've done it a lot in this video. Um, and again, that's not to like press my beliefs on anybody, but it's just, I, you know, I mean, if I, if I think something is the best, then I'm a hypocrite if I don't say what I think. And, um, so Merry Christmas. Um, so these are just some of the things that are turning over in me. I hope that these things have challenged you or that they have caused you to think. Um, and, um, that they have, you know, if you agree or disagree, and I'm totally fine with that. Um, um, yeah. Um, so, um, in my last video, um, I talked about the, uh, basically the differences, the dichotomies between, um, well, dichotomies may not be the right word, but between China and its government and culture and people and, uh, the United States and, um, its constitution and the role I think that that plays in such society and culture. Um, so I had, um, a friend of mine, um, very intelligent, very, um, opinionated and direct, which I love because I am obviously like that. Um, um, but this person said that, um, perhaps I was reading too much into, um, the situation, which very well could be, um, true. Um, but that, um, that principles, I had made the point that principles are what, um, the, the deterioration and the erosion of principles are what caused the destruction of a society. Um, and this person went on, went ahead to list, um, like, um, Rome and several other countries and pretty much, I mean, not, not all of them by name, but kind of the essence of what I was thinking of in terms of societies that have deteriorated and degenerated and, um, so my, so, um, and this person said that, th that it was because of other factors not related to, to principles, or at least, um, at the very least not directly related. And the only thing I would say about that, um, is that what is it that underlies the values upon which like a military is based or an economy or a government or the um, multiple aspects of society um, around which and in which our lives are subsumed. Um, for instance, I'm an educator, so I'm on, I, I climb the mountain of education. Some people are in the business world or arts or government or family, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what is it that, um, that is intertwined in, uh, through all of these aspects of culture and society that shine a light on what is good and what is bad. What is, what gives us the awareness to make the choices about what's right and wrong? Now, relativism, tells us that right and wrong is relative, that, um, that it's, it's, I mean, I, I'm not saying this as, uh, articulately as I could, because I don't believe in relativism. Um, and so I just don't, I don't really talk about it that much, but so someone can correct me, but it's to say that Relativism is like basically like what's right for me is right for me. What's right for you is right for you. And it's different for everybody. And we need to just learn to respect that and tolerate that. And 
Um, I completely disagree with that. I mean, I believe in individualism uh, to a certain extent. America is wildly individualistic to a degree that is damaging um, to community. But um, it's to say that the choices that we make in at home, in the privacy of our homes, even if even if they we think they don't hurt other people, they can hurt other people. Even if um, nobody knows, quote unquote, that doesn't matter. Like what defines us as people does not start on the outside. What defines us as people begins on the inside. It's, um, it lies in the center of the core of who we are, and it's based on decisions that we make about who we want to become. Um, and again, as um, Stephen R. Covey, I believe it's Stephen R. Covey said, um, between stimulus and response is a choice. And... So it is that paradigm from which I make the judgment, um, from which I believe the judgment can be made independent of whether I think it or not. Truth doesn't change. Um, and it's not me that's made like this discovery or anything like that. I take zero credit for truth <laughs> at all. Um, and if I'm wrong, then it must not be true. Um, but... Um, Change comes from the inside out. And that not only is a fundamental principle of the of <laughs> a human and the way they work, it's a fundamental principle of government and society. And um, so whether it's governmental structure or financial systems or media or education, the erosion of those things, when we find ineffectiveness, when we find dishonesty, when we find um, uh, something falling apart and being destroyed, it's because, you know, even if, you know, even if it's a government and armies are coming to destroy cities, you know, like Rome being sacked um, by barbarians, um, the the fundamentals of, I believe, um, the reason why a society like perhaps Rome or other societies would fall in its at its very essence, is because decisions were made that were disintegrous to the way um, humanity and. Um, everything that flows from humanity in terms of government, et cetera, et cetera, has been designed by God. Um, that's a dangerous thing to say in this world, um, but I really believe that. And so we can point to, we can point to other things. We can say, oh, these, okay, here's the, here's the financial problems that, you know, caused the 2008 financial bubble to pop. And here are the things that led up to it. And we can blame, we can blame all these people outside of our own decisions for what the bad things that happen in the world. And there are certainly bad men and there are certainly evil in the world. But really, when it comes down to where the power lies for us to change reality, it's inside. It's between stimulus and response. And whether it's an individual or a government, that can't change. That fundamental aspect cannot change. And that is what I've observed. I'm merely stating something that has been shown to me, not something that I conjured up or tried to articulate or discover. And that's my perspective on it. Um, I hope I have been reasonable and rational in this um, in this sort of rebuttal or explanation. Um, 
So this video is plenty long, and I doubt any, if you're still watching at this point, congratulations. Um, so if you're still interested in philosoph philosophical discussions like this and my miscellaneous ramblings, go ahead and hit subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and for giving me your time. Would love to hear your opinions and love to continue these discussions with you. And um, thank you for watching.